A famous quote by Joseph Pilates, written in his book, Written to Life to Controlology, it says, breathing is the first act of life and last. Above all, learn how to breathe correctly. Often we breathe in a subconscious level. It's such a important tool for us to stay healthy. One breath promotes relaxation, releases tension, and makes you a happier person. It's a vehicle that connects our inner focus, our inner rhythm, and it promotes a natural movement. It cleanses the body, relaxes the mind, and guides the mind. It also promotes a mind and body connection. Breathing is the engine of Pilates. You may have learned a various teaching or breathing techniques, and those techniques are appropriate for the physical activities that you've chosen. Any chosen breathing technique should not create any tension. Let's take a moment for us to breathe. So if you're lying on your back, I ask you to sit upright. If you're standing, stay standing. If you're kneeling, stay kneeling. So I want, I'd like you to close your eyes for a second. Shut down the eyes. Allow the spine to be tall, which means sitting upright, staying upright, staying tall. Now, imagine those lungs, your lungs are two balloons. Now, as I want you to inhale, and the air that you inhale, expand the balloons or the lungs as big as if they can. And as you exhale, I want you to expel the air out of the lungs through the mouth. And repeat again, inhaling, taking as much air as you can, expand the balloons until they're about to explode. Now exhale, release the air out of the balloons, out of your lungs. Allow your shoulder to be easy, to relax, to drip down to the body. Let's do one more breath. Inhaling, taking as much air, the most air you can take today. And then exhale again. Release the air out of those lungs, deflate those balloons back to their original shape. And then when you're done with that, please open your eyes. How do you feel? I hope you feel a lot more relaxed. The preferred method of breathing in Pilates is called the diaphragmatic breathing, or also known as a lateral or intercostal breathing. So we have Mr. Bones here, my friend, to help me explain what is a diaphragmatic breathing. Okay, first of all, we need to know what is a diaphragm. Okay, the diaphragm is a muscle, a dome-like muscle that forms like a canopy underlying the rib cage. So we have a rib cage here and the diaphragm sits like so. Okay, so what happened during inhalation is the diaphragm muscle contracts. When it contracts, it goes down towards the abdominal cavity. It got to push us down this way. Now, when it pushes down, you see the space in the chest, in the rib cage here, the volume increases. When that increases, the intrapulmonary pressure in the chest of a rib cage decreases. And what happens when it decreases? The air flows into the lungs. Now, another thing that happens as the diaphragm contracts down and as you inhale, we also have intercostal muscle between the rib cage bones here. These intercostal muscles, they also contract. When they contract, right, they expand, and then when they do that, the rib cage dent laterally expand out to the side. Now we go back into the contraction of the diaphragm down towards the abdominal cavity. So you see the space in the abdominal cavity here? The space decreases, the volume decreases. When the volume decreases, the pressure increases, okay? What happened during exhalation 
is the abdominal area cavity here wants to create the same pressure when during inhalation. Now, so the abdominal, the organs in the abdominal cavity, the abdominal muscles then pushes the diaphragm and relaxes it up to its original state, okay? To create the same pressure or similar pressure. Now, you see the space in the chest, the rib cage, you know, we call it a thorax. Um, the volume decreases. When the volume decreases, the intrapulmonary pressure de increases. So the air is then expelled out the lungs. And also the intercostal muscles contracts back, relaxes back, and the rib cage comes back into its original state. So that's what happened during our diaphragmatic breathing. I hope that makes sense to you. Let's practice on our lateral breathing. So what we need, I have a TeraBand here, if you have one at home. If you don't have a TeraBand, that's okay. We can use a scarf, a long one, if you have one at home, or a towel. You can roll it and then create like into like a band like. Right, now I want you to put the scarf or the towel or the TeraBand, whatever you have at home, around the rib cage, kind of like a corset, okay? So now cross the scarf, I have a scarf, so I wanna say a scarf. So cross the scarf at front and I'm gonna grab it with my hand, like so, okay? Now, remember lateral breathing, lateral expansion of the rib cage. Okay, so when you inhale, the diaphragm contracts, descend down, and the intercostal expand out to the side. So what this, um, what this scarf is helping you here, is to give you a little tactile cue to how you should expand the ribs out to the side. What you wanna focus more into more of the lateral and a little bit more of the posterior to the back of the ribs. So let's start. Inhaling, expand the ribs out. Exhale. It goes back, the rib goes back to normal position. Inhale. Exhale. I'm just gonna open and lift my elbows up for the sake of the filming, okay? You don't have to do the same here. Inhale. Exhale. Notice, observe what, what's happening with my rib cage. Exhale. Continue, inhale. Exhale. and let it go. Now it's very crucial, when you practice your lateral breathing, you don't let the air pushes the belly out to the side and relaxes the abdominal wall, okay? Now also, that your shoulders just stay nice and easy. If you don't get it today, that's okay. I like you to practice that almost every day. And before you do a Pilates class, Perhaps do about 10 sets of the lateral breathing. Thank you for joining me in my breathing tutorial. I hope to see you in the other video. Thank you.